So the first thing you wanna do is set them equal to each other. So we're gonna use substitution. So let's set this equal to the two X plus one. So we're gonna set these equal to each other. So when we do that, we get x squared minus 5x plus 7 equals 2x plus 1. So now we need to set it equal to 0. So we're going to subtract that 2x, and we're going to subtract the 1. So go ahead and do that. See what you get. Because it's a quadratic, and when it's a quadratic, it has to equal 0. So in order to factor this down, we need to find two numbers that multiply to be 6 and add to negative 7. So I'm going to give you a second to think about that. Two numbers that multiply to be a positive 6 and add to negative 7. Anybody know what those numbers would be, Devante? All right, so negative 6, negative 1. Because negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. Negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7. So we're going to make our box. The x squared always goes here, and the c goes diagonal to it. Then in the other two squares, we put our negative 6x and our negative 1x. So let's go ahead and take out our GCFs. So the only thing that multiplies to be x squared is x times x. So when we're looking in this first column or second column, the GCF of this column would be negative 6, and the GCF of the bottom row is negative 1. So we have x minus 6. We're on page 4. We're doing bell work. x minus 6 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. So go ahead and solve that for x to get your two x values. So this is an example of a parabola. So because our first equation is a parabola, and the line is going to intersect it twice because we can have two, one, or none. Can we put our phones away, please, for the next couple of questions? Phone. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and solve both of these equations. So if you have x minus 6 equals 0, when you solve it, what would you get? x equals... Good. So x equals 6. So when I write that as an order pair, x equals 6, we need to find y. Go ahead and take that 6, and you can use either one of these green bubbles to find y. It doesn't matter which one you use. The second one is a little easier to use, though. So take 2 times 6 plus 1 to get your y value. So 2 times 6 plus 1 would be what? 13. Good job. And now for our second equation, we're going to add the 1. So we get x equals 1. So 1, now take that 1 and substitute it in. 2 times 1 plus 1.
So two times one is two, and two plus one is three. So that would be your two solutions. So the first thing I like to do is label these A, B, C, because I think it's just, it just kind of helps me to do that. So I'm going to label these A, B, C, so we know we're talking about the, and I'm sorry it's so small. If you need to move up, there's plenty of open desks. But for this first one, because we are, I'm showing you the steps. I can't really zoom in. Okay, so step number one. Select a pair of equations to eliminate one variable. In order to eliminate the variable, they have to have opposite coefficients, okay? So when you're looking at it, do you see here how these y's are opposite? How that's a negative three and a plus three? So what that means is if I add them together, it's going to eliminate. So let's do that. Let's add A and B, add equation A and B together. So I'm gonna rewrite equations A and B, and I'm gonna add those together. They're already opposite, so it's gonna cancel. So I have X minus 3Y plus 3Z equals negative four. And then I have 2X plus 3y minus z equals 15. So go ahead and add these two equations together. So when you add it, what is x plus 2x? 3x. Notice that the y cancels. We added them, not multiplied it. So it's x plus 2x is 3x. It's like 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, now you have 3 plus negative 1, or 3 minus 1. What's 3 minus 1? 2. Notice that I try to make my z look different because it's easy to get your z confused with the number 2. So be careful, like make sure your Z looks like a, you know, like I put a line through it so that it looks like a, a letter and I don't get it confused with the number. And that's going to equal negative 4 plus 15, which is 11. Okay, so I'm going to call this one equation D. And right now I'm just going to leave this alone. I'm not going to do anything with that equation. Okay, step two says select a different pair. So I can't use A and B. Okay, now I need to either do A and C or B and C. But if you look at it, notice that B and C are also opposite. The Y's are opposite. So I wanna, if I did A and C, I would have to multiply one of them by negative one. But if I do B and C, they're already opposite. So for step two, we're going to add equations B and C. So it, it has to be opposite. One of the, the coefficients have to cancel. So let's add equations B and C. So I'm going to write those in the box. And we're spending the entire week working on this because this is the only thing that is new. Everything else we've done up to this point was just from Algebra 1, but this is something new. So we're going to spend the next three days practicing this. So 
by Thursday, you'll be more familiar with it. So let's go ahead and add these together. And I always check to make sure I didn't mess up when I copied it. Okay. So when I add these together, I have 2x plus 4y. Sorry, 2x plus 4x is 6x. And what's going to happen with the y's again? They cancel. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2z. And that equals... 15 plus 19, which is 34. So I'm going to call this one E. So what I just did was I took it from a three equation with X, Y, and Z to just two equations that only have two variables. So step three is to use these two equations and solve it for X and Z. So I want you to write these two equations, write equations D and E in this box, and let's solve it. So my equation D is 3x plus 2z equals 11, and 6x minus 2z equals 34. And what do you notice about these two equations? They already have opposites. So what variable is going to cancel out when I add these together? X or Z? Which one is opposites? Z. Z. So go ahead and add these together. And solve it for X. And then we have calculators in the front too, if you need calculator. That is, okay. yeah. So when we add these together, the Z's cancel and we have nine X equals 45. And so if 9x equals 45, what does x equal? 5. So we got 1. We're looking for three answers, and we have found 1. Now let's find z. Now in order to find z, you're going to use either equation d or e. So we got to figure out which one of these we want to use to find the z. I think I'm going to use this one only because there's all, it's all positive. So I have 3x plus 2z equals 11. And we just figured out that x is 5. So go ahead and solve that for z. Does it matter which equation you use? No, you can use E, you can use D or E. We can't use A, B, or C yet though, because we have to know two variables to use A, B, or C. So you can use either D or E to find Z. So when we're finding that, we get 15 plus 2z equals 11, subtract 15, 2z equals negative 4, divide by 2, so no negative 4 divided by 2 
is negative 2. Good. So we figured out that z is negative 2. So what, which variable don't we know? We don't know why. So what you want to do at this point is go back to the top and pick which one you want to work with, A, B, or C. So which one? Let's, let's take a vote. Who wants to use A? B. C. All right, let's go with B. So I'm going to write out B. So equation B says 2x, I just always just write it out, 2x plus 3y minus z equals 15. So we know 2x plus 3y minus, okay. So we know x, so we're going to put our 5 in for x. We don't know y. We know z. So let's put our negative 2 in for z. And that equals 15. Yes. Yes. So because we're subtracting a negative, it changes to addition. This is going to change to a plus 2. So we'll have 2 times 5, which is 10. I'm going to write over there because we're out of space. Okay, so 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3y, and then that becomes a plus 2 equals 15. Go ahead and solve that for y. Combine your like terms and solve that equation for y. So... I uh, combine my like terms, so that would be 3y plus 12 equals 15. Subtract the 12, 3y equals 3. Divide by 3, y equals 1. So you write it as an ordered triple in alphabetical order. So your solution would be x. So what, what did we get for x? What is x? That comes first, and then what is y? What do we get for y? One, and then z is negative two. Yes. So let's do one more together. Go to the next page, and let's practice one more today. So go ahead and label those a, b, c. So the first thing we need to do, though, is we need to make a decision. What variable do we want to eliminate? And looking at it, I'm noticing that this one, you see how these automatically eliminate because they're opposite? So let's eliminate x. So we're going to label these a, b, and c. And let's go ahead and add a and b together. So after I have that equation, I'm just going to set that to the side because I can't do anything with it until I have another one with only y and z. So this one, we are going to need to multiply. And we could do either a and c or b and c. So let's do b and c. 
But if I'm using B and C, I have to multiply this equation by what? What do I need to multiply this equation by? Because I need it to be the opposite. What's the opposite of positive 3? Negative 3. Good. So I have to multiply this equation by 3. So go ahead, take out your calculators. There's plenty in the front of the room if you don't have one. I want you to take this equation here and multiply it by 3. So take this middle equation and multiply it by positive 3. So when I do that, you get negative 3x. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 3 is 9. And 2 times 3 is 6. And now I'm just going to write equation C right under it. Go ahead and add those together. And this is what you should get. So now we need to figure out what we want to multiply by to eliminate either Y or Z. So if I want to eliminate Y, I would need to multiply this equation by 13. Or I can eliminate Z by multiplying by negative 5. So there really isn't one way that's easier than the other. Um, so let's just go ahead and multiply by 13. So go ahead and take this equation and multiply it by 13. So that gives you negative 13y. I'm going to write it underneath. And then 13 times 1 is positive 13. And then, can somebody help me out? What is 13 times 6? Seven. 78. Negative 78. All right, go ahead and add these together. And then divide by 18. So take negative 54 divided by 18. And you should get Z equals negative 3. And once you find the first one, the other two are a lot easier. So now you can decide if you want to use this equation in the black box or this equation in the purple box to find y. And I'm thinking I want to work with this one. So I'm going to use this one to solve it for y. So let's find our y. So y is going to be negative 1y. And then it's plus z, which is negative 3, equals negative 6. Go ahead and solve that for y. So 
So that would be, so we have to add the three. So that would be negative one Y equals negative three, divide by negative one. So Y equals three. So now we have two. So I know that X and, I mean, sorry, I know Y and I know Z. So now I need to go back to either one of these, A, B, or C, to find X. So I'm going to go with the first one. So equation A says X minus 6 times Y, which we figured out is 3, minus 2 times Z, which is negative 3 equals negative eight. Go ahead and solve that. This is our last question. And you should get x equals 4. So our solution, we always write it as an ordered triple, is x, x is 4, y is 3, and z is negative 3. So we're going to continue practicing solving these 3 by 3s. Your last homework, homework six, is over three by threes. So if you have questions, I am here to answer those questions. Um, and pull out your devices and let's work on our homework for the last 12 minutes.